Um, I think it's fair to say two people who are out there making change, taking action, and making a difference right here and right now. We have a saying in English, small acorns. Acorns being the small seed of the massive and mighty oak tree. And when we talk about small acorns, what we mean is saying small ideas grow into big things. So first off, let's have a look at a video, which is very much a small idea from a young boy in Germany. And here we are more than a million trees later, more than a million trees later, planting for the planet. Have a look at this video. I was in fourth grade, nine year old, and in our class, we had the unit about the climate crisis. And in this um, unit, I developed the idea that we could plant one million trees in each country of the world. We have already done more than 150 plants for the Planet Academies in over 20 countries. At the Academies, there's always a child giving a presentation about climate justice. Climate justice means that every citizen in the world is allowed to pollute the air with a certain amount of CO2. At the Academies, we children show other children that even a single tree can bind 10 kilos of CO2 per year and how they can plant themselves to send a signal against the climate crisis. They also learn how to give presentations in front of other children to spread the idea of Plan for the Planet. Everybody that is going to start one million trees in their country, come up on the stage. majority of, on this on this world we can make a difference and never forget one mosquito cannot do anything against the rhino but a thousand mosquitoes can make a rhino change its direction Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. One small idea, as we were saying, to the floor of the United Nations. It gives me great pleasure uh, and a great privilege to have that small boy. I think he's grown a bit since then. Um, and he's left Germany, and he's kindly come all the way to Milan, to Italy. Ladies and gentlemen, the founder of the Youth and Children's Initiative, Plant, Plant, Plant for the Planet, Felix Finkbeiner. Felix, come on up. Phil Common. Thanks. <laughs> Please. I'm incredibly grateful to Barilla for giving us this opportunity to talk about some of the biggest challenges that we are facing globally. When I was nine years old, I wanted to save the polar bear. But soon after, we understood that it's not really about saving the polar bear. This is in Bangladesh. In some areas, floods are getting worse, while droughts will be getting worse in other parts of the world. It's about our future. And this is why we made the sticker, Save the Human. 
When I was a nine, um, when I was nine years old, my teacher asked me to give a little presentation about the climate crisis. And when I prepared that, I found out about Wangari Maathai, a Kenyan who had planted 30 million trees in 30 years. And because of that, we started planting some trees as well. And after um, after we planted a tree at our school, some other schools found out about us and started planting started planting some trees as well. A few local journalists reported about us, and more and more schools joined us. A slightly older student developed a very simple website for us, which was essentially just a ranking among local schools of who had planted the most trees. And lots of schools wanted to outcompete their neighboring school, and this is how Plant for the Planet spread. After one year. Planted 50,000 trees. After three years, one million, and children, youth all across the world started joining us. And soon, these children, youth started doing other things as well, like giving presentations in their schools to convince their classmates, but not just in their schools, but also in front of Rotary clubs and other occasions. And then, many of our ambassadors started speaking with their local mayors. On three occasions, our members have spoken to the UN General Assembly, and many have spoken in their national parliaments or had sit-downs with their presidents. Always trying to convince them to tackle the climate crisis and especially to plant trees. And none of this is an accident, because all across the world, we empower our ambassadors, our children, and youth to do just that. I want to share one example. This is Yana. She's 12 years old, and a few months ago, she gave a presentation at a conference just after the CEO of Deutsche Bank and after the governor of her state. And after her presentation, the journalist only write, wrote about her, and her governor invited her for a meeting a few weeks later, which she then used to try to convince him to、um, get make his state carbon neutral. And we empower our ambassadors to do just that all across the world. And so far, we've empowered 70,000 children and youth in 67 countries at our Plant for the Planet academies. And maybe all of this is why the United Nations Environmental Program asked us to lead the UN Billion Tree Campaign, which was originally started by our hero Wangari Maathai. That campaign had the original goal of planting one billion trees. But so far, with the help of governments, companies, and organizations all across the world, we managed to plant 15 billion trees. So a while ago, we started asking ourselves, where do we go from here? What's the next step? And because of that, we had a few big questions like, how many trees even exist in the world, and how many additional trees could we plant? So we started asking lots of. Um, climate scientists and ecologists, but none of them could really answer our question because nobody had tried to figure this out before. But then we met three scientists、um, at Yale University in the U.S., and after a three-year research project, they came back to us with th-、uh, two main answers. The first one was that there are about three trillion trees in the world, and the second, more important one, was. That we can restore up to another one trillion trees, without being in competition with agriculture or settlements. And if we manage to plant these one trillion trees, they would capture about a quarter of human-made carbon emissions. So they wouldn't solve the climate crisis, but they would be incredible, an incredibly valuable time joker. They would give us enough time to reduce our carbon emissions globally. And keep global temperature rise below two degrees. So since then, it is our mission to convince the world to plant a trillion trees. But in our journey, we all, we notice it's not just about how many trees we plant; it's also about how we plant these. And that's something we originally discovered when we were、uh, in a project on the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico with the、um, local state. And during that project, we found out that the average survival rate of tree planting projects in that state was just 22 percent. Which means one year later, if you come back, 78 percent of the trees had died. So we wanted to show that it's possible to plant trees more efficiently and more effectively. 
And because of that, we took charge of 22,000 hectares of degraded forest land. That's about 50,000 soccer fields. And we now have a team of 100 people slowly restoring that area. And now, after a few years of doing this, we're planting these trees at a rate of one tree every 15 seconds. So that's about two million trees a year. And we've achieved a survival rate of not 22, but 94%. And all of this with the price of one euro per planted tree. One euro, and that includes our nursery, that includes planting the tree, and then also caring for the tree in the years after to ensure that these trees survive. And of course, we make it absolutely transparent who funded us, who funded those trees, and allowed this to happen. And a few years ago, we wanted to start a project with the German chocolate industry. But not a single company wanted to support us. So one of our ambassadors jokingly said, let's make our own chocolate. And of course, we laughed at this at first, but this has now turned into the change chocolate, which is, of course, fair trade and carbon neutral and is now the most sold fair trade chocolate in Germany. But the most important part is the entire profit from the chocolate goes directly into tree planting. So with every five bars of chocolate sold, we can plant a tree. And currently, we're working on an app for the chocolate. So if you're out in a city, near a store that sells the chocolate, you'll hear a beep in your pocket and know where to go shopping. And a few years ago, we asked the astronauts on the International Space Station if they wanted to try it as well. And shortly after that, 12 bars of the chocolate were on board the Albert Einstein Space Shuttle. So two bars for each astronaut. And since then, of course, we call our chocolate astronaut food. I think that's how it works. And in addition to convincing governments and companies, we need to convince the people that it's important that we tackle this issue and plant trees. And one of the ways we do that is through our campaign, Stop Talking, Start Planting, where we cover prominent results to indicate that we have to get down to action. And we took one such picture with the King of Spain, and the day after we took that picture, it was in all newspapers, and not just in the newspapers, but on the cover pages. Here it's on the side, but we count that as well. And many, many of our members have been protesting all around the world to show that we need to do more to tackle the climate crisis for our future. And right now, we're working on a project to make it as easy as possible for anyone around the world to help plant trees. And to do that, we're launching an app. It's going to be available on the web as a website and also as an iOS and Android app. And this app allows anyone to set up their own personal tree counter. And then if you go outside and plant a tree in your backyard or anywhere else, you can register those trees you've planted. And you can tell us exactly which type of tree you planted, where you planted the tree, how big it is, as much information as you want to provide. But what if you can't plant trees yourself because you don't have a backyard or you just prefer not to? Well, if you can't do it yourself, we have a solution for you as well. You can donate trees directly to, through the platform to tree planting organizations all around the world. And any tree planting organization can register their project tell, um, and show which type of trees they plant, what survival rate they have, and where they plant those trees. And we work with a satellite um, company that provides us daily satellite images of the tree planting locations of these projects so that the donor doesn't have to trust that those, that money is invested well, but can actually see how those planting areas are being transformed and knows that those trees are actually being planted. And anyone can then donate directly through the platform in 80 different currencies to these tree planting organizations around the world. And we will, of course, take no cut of the money, but pass along 100% to the project um, so that they can be supported. 
And to ensure that all of this is fun, we've got a few other features as well, like the ability to follow your friends so you will get notifications when they plant trees. And you can see all the trees that have been planted around the world. You can see where forests currently exist and where additional trees could be planted. And we've got our own new type of Forbes list, the Forbes list for tree planting. So you can see exactly which countries, which um, companies, which people have planted the most trees around the world. The beta version of this platform is already live at trilliontreecampaign.org. We will launch the iOS app um, this Saturday, um, and the Android app will follow soon as well. And to, we are at a position now where I think it's clear to everyone that the only way to keep global temperature rise below the two degree limit is to plant trees, is to plant a trillion trees. But how do we do that? Who is going to fund those trillion trees? The governments of the world are already struggling just to implement their Paris climate commitments. We can hardly expect that they will also fund these trees. So the only possibility is that companies step up and that companies make this possible. So we are calling on all companies around the world to reduce their carbon emissions as much as possible and then to compensate the emissions that they cannot avoid by planting trees. And the companies Vasa and Bitburger are great examples that this can happen and that this can work. And to encourage this, we at Plant for the Planet will start a campaign next year, calling on all companies to do just that, and then also celebrating publicly the first movers that are taking these steps and leading the way. And I just want to show you a few examples what this will look like. Global warming, treatment discovered. Blue planet, let's make it green. Or our climate uh, will be cured not in Paris, but in the forest. So I hope you'll all join me. Stop talking, start planting. Let's plant ahead. Thank you.